Hey everyone. Now in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how IGMP works, okay? And IGMP is used on a network that has multicast going through it if you wanna do it properly. Um, I've seen people get scared of using IGMP and they just turn it off altogether and then everything runs as a broadcast. Now, obviously that's fundamentally bad because you wanna avoid broadcasts on a network generally. So, you know, I'll show how to use IGMP given some uh, equipment here and I'll use my Raspberry Pi multicast TV server as the multicast source and uh, demonstrate how it works. Okay, first of all, I'll go through what I've got on the bench. Um, this is the main switch that I'll be using, this um, HP switch here. And what I've got going in is the red one is the multicast source. Okay, that goes off to the Raspberry Pi. This cream beige colored one here just goes to my network so I can connect to it and gives it its gateway and provides DHCP for a few things. And I've got a couple of things plugged in. So I've got this MacBook uh, plugged in here on one of the ports. And this port I've got going through to a dumb switch and then it goes to an access point and also a wired host over here. Okay, so that's the setup there. Now if I have a look at the config on the switch, it's really basic. All I've got is an IP address for that VLAN one and a gateway for it. There's no IGMP running at the moment. And there's also no TV server running at the moment. So what you can see on the switch ports is just a bit of background traffic, nothing special. Okay, it's mostly from the Aruba AP over there looking for other APs. So you can see there's no real traffic going on there and the packet capture shows that too. So I'm just doing a packet capture of this port. So now what I'll do is I'll go to the Raspberry Pi and I'll start streaming some TV. And if you notice on the switch, these lights just became solidly on then. Okay, that means there's data uh, going through those ports. And if you look at the packet capture, you can see it's just been swamped with all that uh, TV traffic, okay? You can see the multicast destination address, which is what I just started, 239.11.101. Okay, the thing is no one asked for it, okay? Like if I start that on VLC here, sure, you can get it. Okay, there it is. We've got data coming in and that'll work fine. But if no one's watching it, it's flooding the whole network. So obviously that's bad. Now I'll leave that multicast source running, but back on the switch, what I'll do is I'll go into the VLAN and I'll just put IP IGMP on. Now if I come over to this laptop, you can see obviously there's no traffic going through at the moment other than the multicast coming in on this port. But if I start that stream again on VLC here, what happens? Well, the switch starts forwarding the frames through that port and they go off to the host here and we see the video. Now if I stop that, and I'll stop the capture as well, what happened was all that traffic was coming in here, boom, boom, boom. And down here, we've got this IGMP message that said, leave the group. Okay, so it's leaving that 239.11.101, which is the TV source. And accordingly, the port stopped forwarding the traffic. Okay, so we're back to, back to good. Now, if I start that again, I'll just start that. Okay. Now, if I jump back on the switch and do uh, show IP IGMP groups, you'll see as our multicast address that we're interested in here. And we see we've got this uptime, but we've also got this expires, okay? It expires in 37 seconds. Okay, so it's still going now, obviously. But what that means is this switch hasn't seen any new IGMP messages. So it's, it can't be sure if that's dropped off for some reason and just missed the IGMP leave. So what it's gonna do in 22 seconds, that's gonna, that's gonna expire. And that'll stop the multicast uh, forwarding through that port. So just hang on the edge of your seat here for 12 seconds. I know that that video will freeze once this countdown gets to zero. So five, four, three, something like that. And any moment now, there it is. Okay, so what's happened there is the switch has stopped forwarding those multicast frames through. And the reason is because it, it was looking for IGMP messages saying if, uh, that someone still wants it, there weren't any, so it just turned that off. So how can we get around that? Well, what we can do, if I show the running again, as soon as I put that um, IP IGMP on before, I had the no querier at the moment, okay, with a querier interval of 30. Now, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna say IP IGMP querier, okay? So there it is now. And uh, the interval's 30, just for this demonstration, I'm gonna make that a bit smaller. So I'm gonna go IP IGMP querier interval 10, okay? So that's how it looks at the moment. So if I have a look over here now on the capture, I'm just gonna do a new capture 
and I'm just going to filter it just for IGMP so we don't get swamped down with all the other traffic in there okay I'll stop him now that stop message will come through keep it fresh I'll start again so right now I've got nothing running nothing's being forwarded out here and if I show IP IGMP groups uh, well we don't have anything okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this traffic now that started obviously and what happened at, in the background here we saw this message it said IP I it's join <laughs> what happened here is we saw this message it said IGMP and we're joining that group but you'll see this now query okay what that what happened there was that was the switch this 0250 address that's the switch sending out a general query saying who wants what and this laptop will again say hey I want it 2391101 that's the one I'm using and again this is like all, all the time you wouldn't really need it this often but uh, that's what's going on it's co the switch is constantly querying who wants what so that forces these IGMP messages to come through okay so it knows that thing wants it so if I come back over here show IP IGMP groups this thing that it supposedly expires in 20 seconds never will so I'll do it again Ooh, 14, 12, oh, not looking good. Ah, back to 28. Okay, it'll never expire because we have the IP IGMP querier. Now, that's all good and well, but in this world, we use wireless mainly. So uh, a number of new things have to come into consideration here, mainly because clients on a wireless network could be anywhere. They could have any speed connection to the AP, depending on where they are, but you've got a multicast source that might have to go to multiple clients. So how's that work? Well, I'll show you, and I'll also show you some of the RF side as well. Okay, so here I've got a laptop on the wireless side, and I've actually reduced the functionality of that AP because it would normally prevent this, but just to show you what would happen with a simple AP, if I start the uh, stream on here, here's what goes on. That sent an IGMP message through the AP, and of course the switch is forwarding it. Now, if I do the show IP IGMP group on the access point, Again, we can see it because it's, it's right there, okay? But what you'll notice on here is it might seem to be working, but you'll probably see some glitches come through. Okay, you might have, yeah, you might have just seen some there, there, glitches, the data's not good. What's happening? Well, if we have a, do a bit of a, a packet capture here on the wireless side, what we'll see is the Raspberry Pi source, obviously, but the destination is a multicast MAC address. And look at the rate. It's 12 megabits a second, okay? That's the multicast rate of this network. And if we have a look up on the uh, spectrum display, you can see, yeah, I'm using channel 36 as the primary one, but see how it's swamping it there, okay? Now what that means is I'm sending this out at 12 meg and I'm also just using one of the channels instead of the 40 as well, which is a bonded 40 meg um, pair here. But what that also means is because this destination is multicast and not the MAC address of this, a, this uh, laptop here, these frames are not acknowledged. Okay, they just go out and hope for the best. At, and that's the reason they go low. They go at 12 meg in the hope that the client will get them and that's it. But the thing is, there's always going to be collisions of some sort and you will get errors like that in the actual traffic. Okay, and it uses up a lot of RF time. Okay, so if I stop that, okay that'll stop forwarding through from the switch which is lucky so the uh, the AP will stop transmitting that and that should should clean up there a bit but what we do in the config for the AP is set this broadcast filtering back to ARP which is what its default is anyway and put a bit of optimization on for multicast and when you do all that okay just come back to here I want to find it okay so this is the AP again um, if I join that group again on this laptop, traffic will come in, but you'll notice immediately on the RF, we're using 40 meg channels now, okay? We're using 36 and 40. And if I have a look at the data coming in, what you'll see, now you won't see the acknowledgement because it's the laptop doing the capture, but there are acknowledgements there now. So what's happening is the data is coming in, but look at the destination address. It's actually this Apple rather than a multicast address, okay? And the rate that it's coming in at now is 450 megabits a second which is very different to before okay so these frames are acknowledged then look at this we've got RTS is going on here it's sending the data it's making sure it's there okay 
And because of that, we don't get glitches anymore. Okay, the data is guaranteed to get there to a degree. And what that means on the RF side is we're staying in the air less time. So we're using less of the RF. Now you might see, okay, you're using channel 36 and 40 before it only had 36. But the amount of time this was on in 36 was a lot more. You can see it's redder there than it is up here. So these frames, they're getting on using 40 meg, being really quick, and then they're getting off the, the air, okay? So someone else can use it. So even if you think uh, your application, you've got data for it, you've still got to share this RF space with everyone around, your own SSIDs that you might have or someone else's. So you want to be on the air and off as quick as you can. Okay, so going back to iGMP for a minute, what I've got here is a couple of laptops, but this one is connected uh, through the cable to this switch here, which is just a dumb switch, okay? It doesn't know anything about anything. And um, this laptop over here goes wirelessly to the AP, and then it's wired into this same dumb switch. Now that switch to get the traffic in the first place is connected through this cable here into this port right here, okay? So what I'm saying is from this switch's point of view, it has two clients down there, although it only sees one port that it's got to forward traffic to. So what I'll do now is I'll set up this uh, port over here that this laptop's in to be a port mirror of this one. So we can see what's going through this port, okay? So I want to mirror traffic from 13 onto port seven. I'll go back to the old uh, switch there and I'll go mirror port is which one? Seven, okay, that's what I'm gonna put it out to. Then I'm gonna go to interface 13, which is the one I wanna see and monitor that, okay? Now on the laptop, I'll just disable its, its own network stuff because I'm just gonna use this to monitor now. So I'll do that, turn ethernet off, which still actually has it on, believe it or not. So, so now, I'll just restart all that. So now what I'm capturing on this port to this laptop here is actually what's going through this port so I can see what's going on. And as you can see, there's IGMP messages bouncing all around the place. Okay, well what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the uh, wireless one, okay? And if I have a look on the uh, capture here, which I'll just stop and, and show you what's going on, you can see what happened. Now earlier, as I pointed out, we have this membership query general. That's just from the switch to everyone saying who wants what, basically. And they'll all report in on what they want. Now when I left on that laptop, the laptop sent this leave group, okay? It said, I don't want to be part of that group anymore, and it left. Now, immediately after that, the switch sent out a query that's specific for that group, basically saying, does anyone still want that traffic? Now, the reason it would do that is because this port on the switch here is actually serving multiple clients, okay? It doesn't know there's a switch downstream here or, or whatever's going on. So the leave message came in from one of these, which would be via the AP for the wireless client, and reach the switch here with what we saw. But what it was asking there by saying membership query specific, it's saying, does anyone else want this traffic down on this port? And when it sent it out, it got to this laptop and it said, oh yeah, I still want it, so it came back. So that's why you have an IGMP query on your network. So if it sees something like a leave message, it doesn't just say, okay, I heard the leave message coming in this port, I'm gonna stop forwarding it out this port now. Okay, that would have killed the other client. Okay, so it's just a way of managing it and keeping everything up to date on who's joining what group. Okay, so that's basically how IGMP works. Um, as you know, broadcasts on a wide network are bad, but they're even worse on a wireless network. And if you don't have IGMP set up properly, you're basically dealing with broadcasts. Okay, now you might not really care about that so much if you say your application might not have stuff like video, it might just be a low bit rate uh, sort of application. But it doesn't matter because once you hit wireless, you're sharing that with everyone. And while those data rates are low, if you're using multicast destination in the air, you're using more airtime than you really need to do, okay? So a bit of planning avoids a lot of problems. So don't be scared of IGMP, it's there for a reason. And if you're using multicast, you should set IGMP up properly and you won't have any worries and it works quite well, obviously. That's why they came up with it in the first place. So I'll leave that there and until next time, take it easy.